So because this is a prostate cancer symposium, I'm specifically focusing on men who have extremely low levels of testosterone from androgen deprivation therapy, or ADT. I want to preface this talk by saying that I'm in no way against ADT, and I don't want anyone leaving here thinking that they should not go on those medications if it's recommended by their physician. However, there certainly are side effects associated with androgen deprivation therapy, and I think it's important to have a very frank and open conversation about what those are. We know that if men experience the side effect that we forewarned them about, that they exhibit a lot less distress than if they did not realize that that was something that could happen to them. Because then you're worried if your cancer's coming back or if something's wrong with you, but if you know it's related to the therapy, there's a lot less stress related to that. We also know that men are more likely to seek care for a side effect that they knew could happen with their medication, and we know that they're more likely to seek care sooner, which is really important when we're talking about some of these side effects like erectile dysfunction or diabetes. Um, so briefly, I'll talk about some general symptoms of a hormone uh, deprivation. Then I'll talk about the sexual dysfunction, metabolic complications, body composition changes, and then the psychosocial impact. So just some brief definitions. Men who have low testosterone, the American Neurological Association says that a testosterone level of 300 or less is a reasonable cutoff uh, to consider low testosterone. And then to get a diagnosis of testosterone deficiency, you have to have a low lab level and then also some of the signs or symptoms that we're going to discuss today. Contrast that to men who are on ADT who have cash rate levels of testosterone, which by definition is less than 50, but is usually much lower than that. Most of my patients have testosterone levels in the single digits. So that kind of shows how you're going to have a lot more symptoms and more severe symptoms than just a man in the community with general run-of-the-mill testosterone deficiency. So even though there are a lot of side effects from ADT, overall most patients are reasonably happy and can maintain a good quality of life on these drugs. So there's a study of over 400 men on primary ADT, meaning that they did not have radiation therapy or a prostatectomy, but they went straight to androgen deprivation therapy. And when they asked them various questions about their quality of life and their satisfaction, about 40% of men did admit that there was a change in their everyday life um, based on being on these medications. However, when asked about their satisfaction rates, over 50% said that they were satisfied. About 40% said that they were mostly satisfied, and only 10% of patients said they were dissatisfied with ADT. And when they asked the men if they would do it all over again and choose the same treatment, 90% of them said that they would. So these side effects are manageable, but it's just important to know about them ahead of time. Another thing that's important to discuss is that it doesn't quite matter how long you're on ADT for, but what really matters is how long your testosterone is low for. And those can be different durations. So just because, for example, you're on Lupron for four months with your radiation does not mean that as soon as those shots wear off that your testosterone is going to bump right back up to normal. It takes time, and it can take months or even years for a men's testosterone to normalize. And in some men, it actually never gets back to normal. So we recently published this from our data at MS. And we looked at men two years after they finished ADT. And only about two-thirds of them had testosterone that had gotten back to a normal level. And almost 10% were actually still at the castrate level. So even after being off those medications for two years, they had no clinically significant increase in their testosterone. So it's really important when you're thinking about some of these side effects because they can persist for long after the treatment ends. So moving on to general side effects, I think fatigue is something that many men on ADT will experience. A lot of my patients say that they just have a complete lack of energy. Um, it seems to be particularly in the afternoon, so a lot of them will say, I'm taking naps after lunch for the first time ever, or maybe going to bed in the evening right after dinner just because they run out of steam. And we know that testosterone is very uh, closely linked to energy levels. If you looked at men just with testosterone deficiency in the community, um, we've shown that if you increase their testosterone, testosterone to a normal level, they can actually get a, over a 20% reduction in their fatigue symptoms. So you can imagine that men on ADT have an even uh, more significant fatigue um, deficit. And, and this has been evaluated in numerous studies, but they found that men on ADT, not only are they, do they experience fatigue more often, but their fatigue symptoms are more severe, they're more disruptive to their daily life, um, they report uh, experiencing fatigue more hours in the day and then more days in the week. So certainly the fatigue associated with the symptoms uh, with ADT are significant. Uh, one study specifically looked at men um, 
at baseline and then after initiating ADT. And at baseline, only 6% of them said that fatigue was a, a moderate to severe problem for them. And after six months of ADT, that number increased to 36% of men. So certainly the fatigue was not a big everyday issue in many of the men, but you can see that there was quite an increase in fatigue levels after starting these therapies. Another very uh, common side effect are hot flashes. So I would say most of my patients on these um, medications do experience hot flashes, but I think what differs is how frequent they are, um, how severe each spell is, and really the patient bother. So I have some patients who get one hot flash a day and they feel like they're very debilitated because of that. Some men get numerous hot flashes in a day and, and they don't care at all. So I think there's a lot of inter-individual variability, but the bottom line is that most men on ADT will experience hot flashes. Um, a study evaluated this and found that of men who were on ADT for 12 months, 93% of them had hot flashes at some point during their treatment course. So very high percentages, um, but it's definitely something that uh, you can cope with and, and learn to adapt to. Moving on to sexual dysfunction, I think this is probably the area that most people are interested in because ADT will likely alter your sexual function in some capacity. So there was a really interesting study in 18 heterosexual couples where they essentially interviewed the prostate cancer patient and his wife, and they asked them specifically how ADT altered their relationship. And there were varying challenges experienced by each couple, but 100% of them said that it changed their sex life. And that for some couples meant that they no longer had any sort of sexual activity and they had to kind of grieve and cope with the loss of their sex life and others they just had to adapt and kind of get used to the new normal. So it's a very prevalent issue in men who are on ADT. Uh, one of the big things that you'll experience is a lack of libido. So we believe there's actually two types of libido. There's an intellectual libido, which is kind of the thought that, oh, I want to please my partner. We used to enjoy being intimate. Or a lot of my patients will say, I want to want to have sex with my wife, but they don't actually have that desire. And that is largely preserved when you're on ADT. But then there's visceral libido, which is kind of the standard sex drive that you think about, which is where you see your partner or you see an attractive person and you want to have sex with them. And that's largely lost when you're on hormone therapy. And this, I think, probably has the greatest impact on a couple. So the interview studies that I mentioned, when they spoke to the couples, a lot of people, their entire sex life was really predicated on the male libido. So so it was always the male initiating and kind of setting the pace for their sex life. And when the man no longer has libido, then either the partner doesn't step up and initiate and they transition to no longer being sexually active, or the partner does step up but maybe still struggles with feeling undesirable because the partner is no longer initiating. So I think the libido is, is the aspect that has the most impact on the couple as a whole. This has been studied in men on ADT. There was one study that's small, but I think it's worth mentioning. They had nine men who, at baseline, had normal sexual function, normal libido, and then after just 12 weeks of ADT, during that time period, none of the men reported any libido, and none of them had had any sexual activity. So very dramatic, but I think it shows just how the hormone therapy can affect your sex drive. Um, a larger study with 400 men found that about 50% of them said that they had no libido when they were on hormone therapy, and only 25% 25% of them had any sexual activity. So that really demonstrates how um, being on these drugs and having castrate levels of testosterone really influenced your libido. And then one study that I think is particularly interesting is they actually took 400 young, healthy men, and they gave them Lupron to get them to castrate levels of testosterone. And then they separated the men into five groups and either gave them back no testosterone or they gave them four escalating doses of testosterone. And they found that the men with the highest dose of testosterone replacement had the highest libido levels. And then with each decline in the dose that they received, they had a stepwise decline in their libido. And I think that just really nicely demonstrates how how significantly tied libido is to uh, testosterone. Another change that you could experience um, on ADT is the loss of nighttime or nocturnal erections. So whether you know it or not, every healthy man with a good erectile function gets multiple episodes of erections a night. And this is largely lost when you're on ADT. So they studied this with a device called a Rigiscan, which is something that you actually wear on your penis while you sleep, and it measures the frequency and duration and the rigidity of your erections. And they found that prior to ADT, men had about 0.4 erections per hour per night. 
So if you sleep for 10 hours, you're getting about four erections a night on average. After just a month on hormone therapy, the majority of men completely lost their nighttime erections. Those who still had them, um, they were so infrequent, they were a short duration, and they lacked rigidity, uh, so much so that on average, it went from 0.4 to 0.05 erections per hour. So a very marked decrease in your nighttime erections. And as you can imagine, hormone therapy also affects your erectile function. So we know that you need testosterone to have normal erectile function, although it's not as exquisitely tied to testosterone levels as libido is. So that same study where they castrated men, um, or they got them to castrate levels with Lupron, um, in that study, most of the men had a normal erectile function. It was only the men that did not receive any testosterone or the one who had the lowest dose of testosterone supplementation who had erectile dysfunction. So certainly you can still have a low testosterone and have normal erections, although when we're talking about castrate levels, uh, the risk of erectile dysfunction is quite high. This was evaluated in the men who were on primary ADT, so again, no prostatectomy or no radiation, but just hormone therapy. And with ADT, only about 30% of men had erections that were um, sufficient for intercourse. So kind of firm enough to be able to use for sex, the minority of patients actually could achieve that with ADT. And we evaluated this at MSK in our radiation patients. So we essentially looked at radiation patients who got ADT compared to those who only had radiation therapy. And we found that the men uh, with ADT had lower um, scores on a, a questionnaire on erectile function. So only about... Uh, 25% of them had a normal erectile function compared to over 40% in the men with just radiation. But then we also looked at their response to pills, like Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, or Stendra. And only about half of the ADT group could even respond to pills and get an erection satisfactory for intercourse on those drugs. And so that means that not only do they get more ED, but they have more severe ED that's refractory to first-line treatment and therefore necessitating more complicated treatments like penile injections or even a penile implant. The last sexual change I want to mention is that you can get orgasmic and ejaculatory dysfunction. So many of my patients say that it's hard to achieve orgasm when you're on ADT. I've certainly had patients who notice no change in their orgasmic function, but I would say that they're in the minority. So a lot of my patients will say it, it's harder to achieve um, an orgasm, so they have what's called delayed orgasm, where it just takes more time and stimulation to get there. Um, some men, maybe they used to orgasm every sexual encounter, now they're only orgasming half the time. Or some men will say the orgasm itself seems less intense, or it's a shorter duration. And unfortunately, some men might completely, might completely lose their ability to achieve an orgasm. So when this was evaluated in a study, they found, they asked men essentially, um, is your ability to orgasm non-existent, poor, good, or uh, fair, or good? And at baseline, 65% of them said that they had a good ability to achieve an orgasm. And after six months of ADT, that number went down to 16. So that doesn't mean that you can't orgasm. Um, certainly some men still could, but your ability to do so is altered. And then lastly, um, men who are on primary ADT, so even without other prostate cancer treatments, um, can get a reduction in their ejaculate volume, which a lot of patients don't notice or they aren't bothered by, but I've certainly had a lot of patients who are very bothered by this reduction in their ejaculate volume, so it's something that I think is worth mentioning. Uh, moving on to metabolic complications, I think the most important uh, is diabetes. So we know that diabetes is very closely linked to testosterone deficiency, so much so that the American Academy of Clinical Endocrinologists actually recommends screening all male diabetics for testosterone deficiency. So you can imagine that men on ADT have a significantly higher risk. And when this was evaluated in 12,000 patients, they found that men on ADT had more than a 60% risk of diabetes compared to men who had just a prostatectomy. So we're talking about very marked increases in diabetes risk, and that's why in our practice we recommend that anyone on ADT um, implement a diet and exercise program because these can have uh, significant health effects. You can also get an increase in your cholesterol. So they evaluated men before and then after one year of ADT and found almost a 10% increase in total cholesterol and the LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, and almost a 30% increase in your triglycerides. So again, a very unhealthy change in your cholesterol profile, which is where diet and exercise come into play. And in this study, they actually recommended a statin drug like Lipitor or Zocar to further reduce your risk.
Moving on to body composition changes, this is something that's also very important for your overall health. So I think the most important one is bone mineral density loss, which is osteopenia, or in its more severe form, osteoporosis. And this is a very real risk for men who are on ADT, and we know that the longer your testosterone is low for, the more at risk that you are for fractures. However, once you stop these drugs, and if your testosterone gets back to normal, you can build back some of that bone density that you lost. But this was evaluated in an older study. So before we had all the drugs we have today, they actually used to surgically castrate men with advanced prostate cancer. And when they evaluated these men compared to age match controls, they found a 13 times higher risk of fractures, which when you're dealing with elderly patients, a hip fracture, for example, has a very high mortality rate. And that's why it's so important to protect your bones when you're on ADT.